Hey everyone, it's Armstrong here from Adai Miniatures and today I want to do some more terrain. Yeah, since yesterday we did the uh, barricade, I decided to do this. And this is a jump ramp built out of crappy plastic cars and some corrugated carbon. So if you want to see how I did it, please stay tuned and keep on watching. And here we are. How you can see, I have quite a bit of a mess on the desk right now. But this is mainly what we're gonna need for the project. So what I want to build today is a um, jump ramp. Yeah, so as a base for it, I'm gonna use this 5 mil foam board. Because, you know, foam board allows you to, if you remove the uh, top layer of it, yeah, and you know one layer is usually stock better than the other if you remove the top layer of foam board it usually allows you to sculpt into it a little bit or you know texture better let's see which part is better oh both of them are quite bad to remove so it's gonna be a struggle yeah but that's why i chose a foam board as a base and i want to build a jump ramp i want to use a this kind of cardboard as a ramp itself yeah uh, but well we need some elevation and it have to end abruptly yeah so for the elevation I'm thinking about this crappy plastic cars this was actually um, when I heard first about gaslands I asked my wife to got, get me some cars because she was in town and she got me those yeah? Just a big box, I think that there was like 8 or 10 of them in it. I cut already a few of them into pieces. But you know, I started converting them and then I just looked at them and they was like completely out of scale. So they are partially converted, you know, all of them. Well, most of them were actually finished being converted and I started painting them. But I think that, you know, like maybe two of them can work as the back of the ramp and one of them as a front. So, you know, I can layer the cardboard on top of them to build up the ramp. But first I want to actually remove the wheels because the wheels can be used. You know, I can just stack them and make the stacks of wheels as a terrain as well. Of course, I don't think that they're going to be really needing wheels from this one. Yeah, but still I want this to be a little bit lower so removing the wheels with would help with that but first I need to just measure how wide this is and then cut the piece and prepare it for the further work so I'm gonna make it as 10 centimeters so roughly what two and a half four inches wide yeah for those who use inches I prefer centimeters, inches are mm, not very precise in my opinion. Yeah? Yeah, for me, inches, foot, yards, and all of these measurements from Middle Ages are somewhat imprecise. But then on the other hand, you know, it's been used for ages and nobody was complaining, so metric system was created as a replacement and half of the world decided not to do that so it must be good enough for people yeah but now right now i just gonna cut this and be and peel the paper off and be right back so it turned out that by accident i bought the better foam board and yeah, the one which have really strong glue so i needed to wet the paper after removing the first layer, I needed to wet the paper and then roll off the rest of it. So I'm back to foam here. But it took me a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I removed the wheels already. And you know, like those cars, this one is heavy armor than everything. This one is clean without anything. But it just... Uh, it kind of works for this project because it's just showing, you know, that these are abandoned Gasland cars. Yeah, that over time got covered by crap and created this ramp. Yeah, so 
I think that this works and you know today I'm using again a hot glue gun not very much used by me tool in gaslands in general as I think that you know cars are better uh, glued together with a super glue but then you know hot glue is a very good terrain building tank so and this is the terrain so I don't complain about it and now this one and I'm just thinking do I have enough of a slope in here I would still like to throw something in maybe those crappy cars Like before, I just want the wheels from them because those, even they are extremely crappy, can be used for the wheels. Ah, whatever. I see that I need to cut it off from inside. That's easier. All right. Okay. Now, <clears throat> they can be used for uh, piles of wheels, you know, for any kind of build. So why not use them? And you know, those cars otherwise would be completely useless to me. So I'm thinking like that or like that, not sure. Have one more here. And this one have even worse wheels than before. And I think that they was in the same box. So I think this way, yeah. So we have this one way and then the other. Actually I'm surprised that the bottom is detailed this way and in here we have the base for the quite long jump ramp yeah um, now let's get some other materials so this file is dead yeah it doesn't have any more proper grip on it Just see what I can do with it. Yeah. You can see how you know this is nicely textured as a because this is a file still, so it's gonna help, but you can easily use this this as a material for your build. Yeah. And I'm all about upcycling stuff. <laughs> Especially when it cost me nothing. Yeah, and upcycling stuff like this, you know, this file would end up in the bin in a few minutes probably. But now it can be a part of terrain and remain in this house, so you know. I don't make it homeless. <laughs> uh, like this, this is gonna give me better slope in here. Yeah. So let's start here, here, and but I rotated it unnecessarily. It. But you can see this is crap material that I would throw out and now it's a part of something bigger well terrain piece mm, let's add it here 
And now let's make the, take the main material that I wanted to use for this ramp, which is this paper. I spent a pretty penny for it, like I think it was two or three euro. <laughs> so yeah. You know, this is... I don't even know what it is. And there is this kind of wavy thingy for the middle. Don't know why. Yeah, I didn't ask. So I don't have answers. But it is our metal sheeting that's gonna be just thrown around. And I can just cut it into different widths and you know this thing is tearing apart so I can have like two of them just overlapping here. I want a little bit of edge so I can taper this edge. Maybe I'm gonna just taper it right now because later on it's gonna be too late probably. Mm. So just take your blade and it isn't very sharp, it should be sharper for this purpose and just cut it like that and you have a taper in your base yeah like i said this blade is dull as heck i need to change it so now i can just attach it like that one two three four and that's enough and i have first bit done like this is going smooth, smoother than I was expecting. And a second one. Yeah, and since this is cardboard, and you know, like, I'm not a huge fan of cardboard, yeah? I'm gonna say that, that out right. I always say that cardboard isn't the best material to build stuff with it's okay yeah in most cases you can survive using cardboard but i really don't find it the greatest material yeah, terrain wise yes other buildings not really I was always of that mind. I've seen people using cardboard to detail um, the 40k, especially orcs builds, uh, and this is, it was killing me. Yeah. Especially with plastic art, it's so easy to obtain. Yeah. But you know, to each their own. Some people like to use cardboard. I would avoid it by any cost when it comes to minis. When it comes to terrain, it, it's usable. I use it in a lot of terrain. Alright, so we have this. You can see how this is gonna look. You know, like these are just sheets of. Mm, uh, sheets of, you know, like maybe broken up containers that they used you know to build up this ramp or something you know and the broken up cars and everything instead of just being you know some sort of a mm, the sandy hill it's actually something that was purposefully put into place yeah or maybe you know something just collapsed on top of those cars and created this ramp yeah one of the two but it's not just purely hill that created itself with a rough edge yeah so like that and in here do i have anything to put up here actually no let's leave it like that i have some spruce but let's first do this bit OK, 
Okay. Now this bit. Right, I'm gonna figure out if I want to do something with this and be right back because I need to find a more hot glue sticks because I didn't think it through and I just prepared one for myself. And I'm back, I decided that I'm gonna leave this, you know, just hanging from here. Yeah. Only support I'm gonna probably do is a bit of a sprue. So how long I need, about this much. And just so it ain't gonna be wiggling in the wind and then get destroyed very quickly. So, just this. And then I can glue it here, you know, it's gonna have some support. And then next bit I can just glue like that, and it's gonna be done. So. This one I need to throw a little bit more of hot glue, as it is the end piece, so I want it to be nicely stuck to everything. And I want this one just being maybe like that. Just overhanging, you know, maybe bent over this. So yeah, terrain used to be my favorite thing to do for war games. Yeah. I used to build a ton of terrain, especially for like Warhammer 40k and Dungeons and Dragons games. And so now you can see that there are cars sticking from the side. There is a piece of that. There, there is back and the front of the car. And here you can see the sides as well. Yeah. Now we need to bevel everything because we don't want to have you know squares in here and you know when you're beveling you can actually play a little bit with the blade allow it to go in and out just a tiny bit which is gonna just create this uh, uneven shape And this edge is not like anyone gonna really be using it for the game purposes. You know, it's gonna probably happen that someone just gonna run over this side instead of hitting the jump ramp. Yeah. Okay. And you know, like always, people say don't cut towards yourself. <sighs> I strongly agree if you have a very bad motor control. Yeah? If you cannot hold your blade, you are too young to be responsible for yourself, or you are old and, again, not responsible for yourself, then don't do that. So we have still a couple of pieces that I cut off extra. And so I can dress this with a smaller bits. Let's see what we can do. Like, I'm just wondering if I want to cover this because then those cars are gonna be just completely invisible from this side, but I would probably want to do something along this line, having, you know, one piece. No, because this is flat. Uh, maybe just adding couple on the top, you know, smaller pieces, gonna give it a little bit more of a character. 
is now just picking, you know, what you want to do with it. Okay, did I? Right, I was thinking that the uh, that the foam board bent, but luckily didn't. So. I want some more over here as this is kind of bad for the cars. Maybe one in here. Yep. And I think that that's it for the card yeah I don't think that I need any more of that in here I have big ramp let's see if the cars can actually well the front gonna be a bit issue but you can easily have a car or maybe even two next to each other stand on it so it's a big ramp yeah come on now, what else? Mm. I have some toothpicks. I just break them. They are not toothpicks. They are what do you call them now? Kebab skewers. I was that was the wrong word I used. I remember that I used those as uh, rocket launchers. So now just as a rocket with rocket launchers. So now just breaking those, I can start just sticking them, you know, like a bits of wood sticking in, in there, with just a little dab of hot glue on it. Yeah. It can just, you know, I don't think that they're going to use all of them, but they can work as a decoration. This can be, you know, like a, some, some small support or something, you know, you can always find a piece of wood that can be added to stuff like that and it can be as well you know like a bit just lying on the ground laying on the ground and you know one thing that I really really despise about hot glue is the wisps they drives me, drive me nuts. All right, so I filled it up and now I can just stick a couple of those inside. Yeah, so this is gonna close up this gap in here. And again, just a bit more. You know, maybe someone was living in those cars and was stockpiling some wood. You can have whatever explanation you want for this in here and just one more just add the detail in here all right so this is pretty much done i don't want this here i want the corners to be slightly around it this is gonna save them from destroying themselves every time i move this piece of terrain and all right now i need some sand as we are working in a sandy area come on be nice to me i have this rough gravel yeah it's a mixture of like two types of sand i think or three i don't remember how many i mixed back then it was quite some time ago great so I need some printer paper as a base because <laughs> otherwise this is going to be extremely, extremely messy. 
So yeah. And what I want to do now, just grab some white glue. I have white glue in the tub here and a big brush. And I want to uh, start adding the white glue wherever I want the sand to be. So I want the sand to be all over the base. Yeah, and you could probably think that, you know, some sand could collect inside of this. So I just get with it. I just gonna do small section uh, right now and then I gonna turn off the video and finish it off. But you can see how easy it is, yeah? If you never did terrain, this is probably the easiest thing you can do. So yeah, I'll be right back. So here we have it. It's uh, fully, you know, sand covered, yeah? I added a couple of places where I thought, you know, that the sand may collect. Well, in this case, gravel, because it is quite thick for a desert sand. Yeah. But now comes the hardest part of any terrain project for me. It's waiting for the glue to dry. Yay. So let's see this in a couple of hours then. And here we are, 26, 7 hours later, yeah, it finally dried, I black bombed it and we can start the paint job. So, again, like yesterday, I want to start from the uh, scab red on the metallic parts. Yeah, I just want this to be mostly covered, not fully. Some grey is going to be showing up, that's not going to hurt the final project at all. So let's just do that and you know most of the people do this exactly from the other way other side but I have more red than I have metallics at home so <laughs> that's why I try to spend the reds quicker I need to limit my number of paints to I would be happy with about 100 or so yeah but right now I have Well, definitely more than 200 so spending different colors for different projects you know and just keep on using them gonna help me lower the number of paints and finally maybe even figure out what paints I like the most because quite often it is this with you know, I have too many paints and then I don't use them all. I don't try them all properly. And they just keep on standing there. Well, standing. Right now I have them all in one what do you call it? basket. So whenever I paint, I have to go and search through that basket to find whatever I need. Right. Wow, that was too heavy. But that doesn't make much of a difference. At the end, they're gonna just throw some extra. Metallic on top of that and it's gonna solve the issue. some brighter spots all right I need to dry it off because last time I went straight for the metallic and it kind of mixed up with the rest of the paint and didn't look so well so I just gonna go with drying it right now and then I'm gonna go with metallic, so I'll be right back. So drying this didn't took long at all. And now I want to apply the metallic paint. And I think that you know the top's gonna be still nice and metallic, the bottom's gonna be rusty, so I don't think that it's gonna be 
hold a dry brush, it's gonna be a quite heavy over brush over all of that. Yeah. Oh, this actually works much better. Yeah, I just want to show that this isn't fully roasted, you know? Well, it is, but there is still some proper material underneath it. Yeah. So the ribbing on the cardboard actually is helping a lot with that process. You can see how nicely it turns out, turning out. Of course, I could use a darker metallic, yeah? and I really like this one. I think that this is gonna be definitely in my uh, 100 paints. Yeah? Once I lower the amount of my collection, this is gonna be permanent member of it. Yeah. You can see how quickly you can just create a very nice looking effect. And I still didn't switch a brush, I'm still on the same brush that I started with. Yeah, so, especially for terrain, the bigger brush, I think the better. Yeah, and I'm always saying that, like I started, you know, painting miniatures, I remember that I was going for like double zero brushes or whatever. Yeah, but then I started watching some good YouTubers who actually knew how to paint. Well, after years of making this stupid mistake, yeah, I started watching people who know how to paint, and you know, all of them are saying, use as big brush as you can handle. And at the beginning, for me, it was, this is crazy, you know, I ain't gonna get any nice details. And then, you know, I discovered that they were completely right and I was completely wrong. Yeah, so you know. Now I decided to listen to those YouTubers and those, you know, painters who knows how to paint. And, you know, definitely if I took the, you know, if I have this advice when I was younger, my Lizardman army wouldn't take me two years to paint. Yeah? It would take me two months, maybe. Yeah, but you live, you learn. So you see now the pieces of a, a file that I cut it. I just decided that they are metal plates. In here we have a front of the car sticking out. I think that it's going to be metallic. Yeah? And I want to make the rest of the cars, you know, rusty. So I'm starting now with the metallic paint. Yeah. And I don't really care because this is terrain piece. So. I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to, yes, finally, to rotate it in the right way. I don't really care much about how it's gonna look at the end. The cars, yeah, they are now just a detail in the terrain piece. So they don't require as much love as usually I give to my cars. There we have it, metallic put on. Yeah. What next? Uh, next we need to fix the terrain. So I will go with the Vermin Brown, because I have it at hand and I want to get rid of as much of it as possible. I think that I have still two bottles of it and I don't even change the brush, you know. If there's going to be a little bit of metallic flakes in the ground, I don't really particularly care about it. Yeah. So let's just brush this on. And you know, like if you have, if you leave some black underneath this uh, gravel that you have attached to it, there's no harm done. Yeah, the black is just gonna show the mm, darker spots and yeah? that where the eye cannot really see properly. And now we have the other edge again, just simple quick brushing and this is the lovely thing about terrain you really don't have to overthink it it's a simple simple thing and you know if you are one of those people who spend hours on each car yeah then terrain gonna be very liberating for you unless you're gonna get stuck in the same 
headspace, yeah? Then, wow, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> and I'm sorry because, you know, I tend to overthink stuff and I tend to spend hours, you know, working on some little things that could be sorted so quickly. So I understand you fully. Yeah? And now I have my bleached bone and I know that I could probably use different color. Yeah, already mixed up and just, you know, ever so slightly. This is a very wet paint because I did water it down beforehand a lot. So it's going to be mixing with this original paint that I put on. I don't care, just a gentle... You can see how I don't even go with a proper brushing. I just go with a small layer of it. And this is so watered down because it was the, when I was transferring it, that was the pretty much the end of my bleached bone. All right, this is done. Now I have to dry it off again and be right back. And now going for the final touch for the you know, ground, I can just take a thick white paint. And that's, come on. This is the thickest one that I have. Uh, again, armor painter, for some reason, the paints are just good. Uh, so I'm very happy with them. And I don't want to have too much of this very bright color on the brush, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And just gentle, hopefully I ain't gonna, no, too much. Just gentle brushing over all of that. It's gonna be that it is sun bleached. Not like the previous build, this one is more of a sun bleached because this is standing in the middle of a deserty area. At least in my head. Yeah, so just with a pure white, well, not pure because it mixed it with whatever was on the brush already. And how you can see, I rarely switch brushes during the painting of terrain at least and cars quite often as well so this is nicely brushed and now <clears throat> because I haven't do any rust effects in like a week or so yeah, let's get the two main colors that I use for the rust and I want to have some rust patches on these old cars maybe somewhere here you know just quick rust patches so I can say that I did some rust. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do anything with baking soda. Yeah, so let's just get some baking soda in here. Yeah. Get this crusty effect. Yeah, the same in here. But of course I don't want to cover the entirety of the metallic stuff. So again, just squeezing it in here and maybe some in here. So I have red and now the orange. Yeah, orange, not brown. Where is my orange? There it is. It's hiding from me. It knows that I'm going to be overdoing stuff. Yeah, my paints know me well. <laughs> okay, that's probably way enough for what I'm doing. So I want to just mix it up with the baking soda and apply this paste to the cars in here and to the rust blobs that I created. I still have some loaded in here, so I can throw it in here, maybe even in here, and in here, here. And we have some other side as well that I can do that. Let's 
this one here maybe yeah I think that that's gonna be enough and now for a change I'm gonna have to change the brush because this one gonna be too big for what I want to do so let's get something a bit smaller I have this one which is still quite decent size brush and I have some of my original base coat for this terrain still wet so I'm gonna squeeze some white into it and create a gray lighter gray color yeah not enough come on and why do I create this lighter gray again wood I don't want my wood to be brown yeah I just want it to be kind of uh, how you say it kind of weathered and you know old and well this doesn't work at all let's go first with the gray and then with lighter gray yeah so I really just want this wood to be more of a weathered wood so grayish color And you know, everyone can take whatever they want from this. Yeah, I think that I don't have too much of the wood left here. Yeah. And you know, you can always add a splodge of whatever color to this. Yeah. And who would say that the cars driving through that place, you know, didn't lose some paint on it. Like, I think that the good idea actually if you are building piece of terrain like that would be to take a uh, if you have any car that have you know this kind of not this one uh, come on oh yeah this kind of plastic you know in the front especially sports car yeah and you know just put a piece just extend the terrain piece a little bit I didn't think about that when I started in this case I would make the shorter ramp yeah, and just grab the pieces of the front uh, what do you call it in English now? You know, the bodywork, the plastic that goes under the sports car and just have them, you know, broken, you know, smashed in front of the ramp because sports car, you know, approaching this would definitely break the, <laughs> the front of them. So, yeah, I think that that would be cool. But this is it. Yeah, this is the terrain piece done. So I'm just going to throw it on the spin table and be right back. And here it is, the jump ramp, whatever you want to call this made out of some cars and a little bit of cardboard yeah? so I'm very happy because this project you know destroyed five cars <laughs> so I give this, this I give this project five cars out of ten <laughs> yeah which lowered the amount of cars that I have to use up which I'm very happy about and the previous project used up only one car so I wasn't very happy with that one but yeah here we have it if you like this video, of course, rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, family and whoever else you want to share it with. Yeah, and this is the end of it, so have a lovely day everyone and take care.